when it comes to clearing a register in your memory in the PLC data table you can use the clear instruction the clear instruction CLR will set the register to zero however let's say that you want to clear more than one word if these words are contiguous or part of a stack or part of a file in other words they're connected one to the other in memory you can use the fill file instruction and fill a group of words with the same value so if you wanted to clear 50 words as long as they're contiguous you know n71 n72 through the 50th word then you can execute a fill file against a first word in a stack or a first word in a file for a length of and the source value will fill all of those words in that file before we start executing this logic the purpose of this lab was for you to be able to compare the behavior of the FIFO first in first out and the LIFO last in first out so we basically have lung zero which is nothing but a number generator and you have a free running timer meaning that T40 timer data type being instructed by a timer on delay instruction is accumulating continuously as long as the rung is true the move instruction is doing a word copy it's copying the 16-bit integer from T40 accumulate register into N70 every single program scan and when the timer reaches 32,767 66 the greater than or equal to instruction is true and it resets T40 therefore T40 will never overflow it will just continually increment or accumulate from 0 to 32,766 reset back to 0 and do that continuously as long as the rung is true if the rung goes false then T40 timer data type is reset by the TON instruction the false execution of the TON instruction that's simply for the purpose of giving us a semi random number or a continually changing number to capture and put into the stacks for the LIFO and the FIFO the remaining rungs rung 1 and rung 2 execute the LIFO load and the LIFO unload rungs 3 and 4 execute the FIFO load and the FIFO unload we have brought out on top and locked it on top data file N7 and for the purposes of you observing the behavior and comparing the stack N71 length of 10 so that'd be N71 through 10 and then that's for the LIFO for the FIFO you see that its address is N731 length of 10 so that would be N731 through N740 now the LIFO the rungs 1 and 2 they're going to unload into destination N720 look in rung 2 LIFO unload destination N720 the FIFO unload will unload into destination N750 the last rung using the fill file when you toggle switch 3 or the switch wired up to the IO terminal that controls the state of memory location I colon 0, .0 slash 3 when that goes from the false to true transition it will fill N70 for a length of 101 with zeros it will all re also reset the position of the stacks you see R6 colon 0 reset R6 colon 1 reset that will reset the stack position pointers so you can start from scratch so if it gets all boogered up on you just toggle switch 3 which is the fourth input you have input 0 1 2 3 the fourth input toggle that on and off and that clears everything you can start over 
Okay. So right now, um, that input is off, so that instruction is true. Now, it doesn't look that way, but we're animating a dead piece of graphics. We're not actually online running the program. So that switch is off, therefore that instruction is true, true if off. Now, when you flip in input zero on, then that instruction goes true, the run goes true, the timer starts timing, and the timer timing bit bypasses the switch zero to keep the run true. So as long as this run is true, the timer is going to continue to accumulate. And on every single program scan, the timer accumulates, and on every single program scan, the move instruction, which is a word copy, copies the value in the accumulate register of timer data type T40 into the integer N70. So that value, even though right now it's static in the image you're looking at, 81, it's actually, if the logic was executing, would be going up very rapidly towards 32,766. The time base for this timer is one hundredth of a second. So every one hundredth of a second, the preset, or I should say the accumulate, gets one closer to the preset. So every second, the accumulate would increase by one hundred. Okay, so we're sitting here watching timer data type T40 continuously accumulate up towards 32,766, reset to zero, and accumulate again to the preset. Rungs zero, two, three, four, and five are all false. Now the reason that I marked zero, one, and three, the permissives, false because when I did the screen capture they were actually true. So I have temporarily put a little mask over them marking them as false. Because if you look at those two instructions one of them is true if on for input one. Well input one is off right now and that's what keeps the timer timing. If the timer's timing then it's enabled so the second instruction in rungs one and three would also be false because they are true if off for the enable instruction for that timer. So let's switch this over to another situation. We flip that switch on, which rung zero now becomes false and resets the timer. Now that this rung is false, the move instruction will no longer be moving a value from the accumulated T40 into N70. Rungs one and three are now true, so they would immediately execute the LIFO load and the FIFO load. The value that is in N70 would be moved to the address for the LIFO, which is N71, and the address for the FIFO, which is N731. And you can see in our illustration here that N71 and N731 are now equal to N70. That might not be 81. It just depends on where the timer accumulate was at and its value when you turned on switch 1, which made rungs 0 go false, rungs 1 and 3 go true. Okay, in the lab, we had you clear everything by toggling switch three. And at that point, the entire file was empty and the control data types, R60 and R61, were completely reset. We had you toggle switch zero on and then toggle switch one and then make a note where the first capture is stored in each of the two stacks, N71 and N731. 
And you notice that they both ended up in the same place. So the first value happened to be 107. If you look at N70 in the second instance there, the second display of the data table N70, and 107 was stored in both N71 and N731. Now, in your lab, it would have been different because you stopped the timer at a different point. Then we had you toggle it a second time. That would be the third instance on this page. And you notice that when we stopped the timer, it stopped at 11 and then moved 11 into the second position in each stack, N72 and N732. And then we had you continue to toggle until both stacks were full. And as you can see here, if you don't remember in your lab, that N71 and 31, 2 and 32, 3 and 33, and so on, if you look here on this screen, you'll see they're all identical all the way across. This tells you that when you load a stack of integers with a FIFO load or a LIFO load, they load up 100% identical. The next step, once it was full, we had you toggle the switch one more time to observe the behavior of the two stacks after they were done. And as you can see, the value 17 was captured on N70, but nowhere does that value appear in either of the two stacks. Because when they're full, they're full. When they're done, they're done. The next step was to do an unload by toggling switch 2. And I had you note where the values were unloaded from and transferred to. That the most important thing is where they're transferred from. You designate where they're transferred to when you enter the value or the, the memory location for the destination. So notice that the LIFO unload took the last one in out to the destination. So if you look at N71 through N710, that's the LIFO stack, 107, 11, 44, 13, 6, 7, 82, 297, 193, 138. 138, the last one in, was moved to N720, the destination for the unload. However, the FIFO, first in, first out, 11 was the first value in. Therefore, it's the first value out. Now, if you're looking really close here, you may have noticed that the two stacks are not exactly identical now. The LIFO stack, N71 through 10, still looks the same as it did. If you look up on the top instance of N7 file, you see that N71 through 10, N731 through 40 are identical. 107, 107, 11, 11, 44, 44. Okay, they're comparatively identical. But when you drop down into the second instance here, where we've actually executed an unload, notice that the FIFO unload moved 107 into N750, but all of the values shifted up one. N740, which was 138, is now zero because the FIFO unload pulls zeros up behind it. But notice that the LIFO stack, the values didn't change. However, the pointers do change to the next position. We can't see that on this screen, but make a note. Okay, then I had you toggle switch to Again, note where the values unloaded from and transferred to. Well, they always transfer to the same place, the destination that you put in as a memory location to unload to. However, notice that again, the, in the um, LIFO, position 10 was unloaded. That was 138 and 710. It was the one unloaded first, but now 193, the second to the last one entered, moves to N720. Compare these very carefully before you go on. If you need to, go back and redo this whole lab. You do not want to move on until you completely understand the behavior of LIFOs and FIFOs, load and unload instructions. Then you can see N731, which is the first in of what's left in the stack, is moved to N750.